Uncle Sugar's Magic Circus. There's no vegans here. It's a meat, it's a meat eating club, okay? <laughs> That's just how it is. Sorry, guys. How about a, a beer eating club? Yeah, it's definitely got a beer eating club, too. Um, sure, sure. So, you know, we usually start, everybody knows the format by now. We start with a letter. So, Keith, give us a letter. Okay. You know, it's kind of weird with the whole COVID thing. Yeah. The mailman comes to my house in Mach 4 with a mm. gas mask on. But I can still hear through that gas mask. He's screaming, you and mother of me, because of all the letters coming in. So I've been burning them. Oh, good. And I got a, <clears throat> got a note from the EPA that I'm polluting the atmosphere in Jacksonville. <laughs> so I'm burning. So I wonder what I'm going to do to guy anything. things. Anyway, today's letter is from uh, a guy named Bill Coffey. So dear Keith, I'm a former Marine. And I wonder if you and Sal could discuss diversity in the Marine Corps. We like to tout ourselves as being diverse. I don't think the American public understands how diverse we really are. Many cultures, races, and creeds. Bill, absolutely. We can talk about that today. Some things, you know, just a lot of people don't notice. Uh, Pee Wee Herman was a Marine drill instructor. Very, uh, are, we are diverse. That's not true. Is that true? No. Huh. It's fake news. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's I true. looked on Snopes. That's the font <laughs> of all knowledge in the Western Hemisphere. But today we have uh, a Native American Marine with us. Marlo Townsend. A.K.A. Retired gunnery sergeant. Retired gunnery sergeant. He's, and here, here's the cool thing. You know, you, you, you work around people, you meet people all the time. You have no idea the stuff that people have in their history. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Here's a guy you run into at work. You're like, oh, hey, what's up, Marlo? How's it mm -hmm. going? We call him Lumby. What's up, Lumby? How's it going? Man, once you start digging through Lumby's career, this guy's done everything, man. Well, let's everything. talk about why, why is he Lumby. Oh, well, absolutely. Why don't you take over from there? Uh, <clears throat> so... Lumby is my nickname, but it's actually the name of my tribe. I'm a member of the Lumby tribe, proud member of the Lumby tribe of North Carolina. Hold the coffee cup up. Nice there's, and there's my, <laughs> and uh, I'm originally uh, from North Carolina, uh, from the Robinson County area of North Carolina. It's a little south of Fort Bragg for anybody who's ever trained in mm -hmm. North Carolina. And uh, I grew up on a farm there. Uh, and I used to see a lot of airplanes from Fort Bragg fly overhead. Okay. And it's full of paratroopers on their way doing the jump sites, doing low-level flights. And I was, you know, I'm a young kid in the, uh, you know, going up and down those tobacco rows. And it's hard, hot labor yeah. in the middle of <clears> summer. <throat> so I was like, there's got to be a way out. One day one of them <laughs> flew over. I was like, that's my way out. <laughs> wow, I love it. And uh, the only reason I ended up in the Marine Corps, this is a funny story, is because... I had a good friend who graduated high school a year ahead of me. He joined the Army, which, you know, I was seriously considering. Fort Bragg's right, you know, a county over. And he graduates high school, joins the Army, I don't see him for a while. Well, I become a high school senior, and I'm around town one weekend just kicking around, and he shows up. And, I, you know, we catch up real quick. I said, so where are you posted? And he goes, oh, I'm on Fort Bragg. I was like, why are you here? You, why did you come back? <laughs> and, uh, you know, that, that was my mentality at the time. And I was like, I'm not going to do that. So I decided to join the Marine Corps on the buddy program. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and we were both going to go to California because it, it was this exotic place that, you know, <laughs> I'm pretty sure they didn't have uh, tobacco fields that, you know, needed me to walk up and down. And that was my mentality. So I joined the Marine Corps. He joined the Marine Corps. And uh, he ended up getting, tw he went to California. He got 29 palms. <laughs> <laughs> Which isn't really California. <laughs> yeah, and I ended up getting. Uh, it's nothing like Eastern North Carolina. No, no. And there was a situation with my paperwork. So, you know, long story short, I ended up staying in North Carolina uh, for my first four years. And uh, it was a great time. I'm kind of glad. It, I'm really glad it worked out the way it did. But, yes, uh Situation. That's how I ended up in the Marine Corps. <laughs> so you went to Paris Island. I went to Paris Island, correct. And then, congratulations, 0311, you made it. <laughs> yes, uh, which is funny because I came in open contract. I had no designated MOS. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, and at the time it was it was the old fallback. If you're not a grunt, you're going to be a cook, or it was motor T. I think was yeah. what we were told. Were you know a yeah. lot of guys were being sent to, and I yeah I, I did well in the field portion anyway. Yeah. So that's what I got. So as an infantry guy, you, you went where? What was your... What were, what My were first you posting was, uh, well, let's talk about that because you've reminded me of something. Uh, I was in the very first uh, class of 
Marine combat training. Uh, oh, I was in the very first. I was oh. in the proof of concept class oh. for Marine combat training. What happened was uh, I showed up in, uh, I guess, October, the first part of October, and the Marine Corps was kicking around the idea of doing Marine combat training uh, versus SOI uh, or, or and or in the addition of SOI. And so they took a class of guys who were going to be grunts. They were already classed up. They said, all right, you guys are going to give us proof of concept. And so we did the entire MCT thing, and then we got the privilege of going to <laughs> SOI immediately after. So, uh, oh, you, you get to do this twice? <laughs> yeah. So, I, yeah. So we, uh, I didn't get out of there until, like, after Christmas. You know, we graduated right at Christmas. A little, little, little bit of leave, and then I checked into India 3-2. Okay. Good old three who, and that was a great time. And this was the time that Second Marines was the. Uh, you guys probably recall this. We were uh, regionalized. Yeah. Second Marines did a lot of uh, cold weather stuff. Okay. Yeah. And um, I checked in. The guys had just come back from Bridgeport, California, and so what was happening was we were going to, uh, we were going to North. Uh, excuse me. We were going to uh, Wisconsin. Good old Fort McCoy, oh, yeah. Wisconsin. Yeah, okay. That was my very first field op. <clears throat> was I, you know I'd been in three two. Maybe a week, you know, <laughs> going to supply, getting all this stuff. I'm still, you know, got my eyes are the size of saucers. I'm like, wow, yeah. what, what am I getting into? And then uh, we deployed to uh, Fort McCoy, Wisconsin for a month. And cold that weather was training. Cold weather training right yeah. off the bat. Nothing like Eastern yeah. North Carolina either. Nothing like Eastern <laughs> From North the Carolina. tobacco farm to the freaking <laughs> <the laughs> snow <laughs> drifts of, you know, so Wisconsin. So I'm going to put these tennis rackets on my feet. <clears throat> so, so here's what's oh, funny yeah. about it. <laughs> Here's what's funny about that. Like, so um, we, when I was at Force, we did a, one of the first things I did was we went to Norway. We did an yeah, exercise yeah. up in Norway. Yes. Right? Uh, Anchor Express, I think it was called. Yeah. Anchor Express. Anchor Express? That sounds right. Anyway, uh, here's the funny thing. We're leaving North Carolina. We're going to get on a C-130 and fly to Norway. Yeah. On a C-130. Oh. Yeah. Via, you know, Goose Bay. How many Bay. refuels is that? We went to Goose Bay, went to yeah. Keflavik, and then across. The you know, Azores. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But they made us get, I don't know why they did this, but they made us get in our Mickey Mouse boots and our, our everything. We had all the wool crap on, everything, yes. and the over whites, and we like, and we got, we're, sta we're standing in Eastern North Carolina, like <laughs> sweating our balls. Heat casualties you have. You know? And, they, and then they put us Church on the plane. Went, yeah. It was, yeah. Like, it was like, you know, a couple hours in that shit before we got up in the, God, in the sky. It's... It got cool once you got up in the, yeah. in the air, but holy crap. Why, why did they do stuff like that? I don't know. Norway's an amazing place, and I've been there a bunch of times. But uh, yeah, well, cold weather. Cold weather has its own unique. Like, there's a lot of unique, like, problems that you have. Like, I remember when we were yeah. in Norway. Like, one of the things we had to do was keep our water bottles like in our sleeping bag at night. That's correct. We sleeping. Yeah. Or uh, the batteries for the radios and just oh, anything yes. you didn't want to freeze solid had to go inside. Well, so, so you're sleeping inside a, you know, a bag. A rock rock <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's weird because. It's kind of like water. The water's the great equalizer. Cold weather's also a great equalizer. It is. Oh. You can see guys just locked down. Yeah. Like, you know, Yeah. you you want an MRE? February! What are you talking about? <laughs> what's, what's wrong with him? Because they make guys with brains freeze. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they make great popsicles. <laughs> yeah, for real. Stand them in the snow. So you went to Wisconsin, but you also went to Bridgeport. So you did the actual, no kidding, cold weather school training stuff. I did. Uh, on my second enlistment, uh, this was post uh, Gulf War, you know, the drawdown and all that. Mm -hmm. You guys probably recall the Marine Corps was getting rid of a lot of bodies. Yep. And I went to reenlist. And uh, uh, funny story, I had to do, I had to go to a division board in order to reenlist. Uh, I had to compete and to reenlist as a corporal. Uh, no kidding. Ninety one. Well, Ninety one. Yeah. 91. Yeah. I had to go to a division board, and uh, yeah, it was ugly. And, and there was a general sitting on this board, <laughs> wanting you know, like, which. I thought it was normal, but apparently it was very, no, no, no. It was very abnormal. <laughs> but uh, I got to stay, and I had a choice. Uh, I could re-enlist as an 0311 and go to Bridgeport, or I could re-enlist as a uh, LAR, you know, be an LAV crewman, mm. and, uh, and go over there because apparently they did well for themselves during the Gulf War, and they were trying to beef that organization up. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I was already an 03. But uh, I did not want to stay here. I wanted to go somewhere else. So, so you were an instructor at Bridgeport, right? That's correct. I checked into uh, Bridgeport to go through uh, Mount Leaders course uh, qualifications and uh, and checked into the three shop and instructor, unit ops. Yeah, yeah. And that was before you came to SOTG. 
That's correct, yeah. Uh, and, and my orders to SOTG were because I had those qualifications. It was That's a, right. There was a hot field. To so, so I was going to tell us what it is. Yeah, Special Operations Training Group, right? Yeah. This is the organization that typically they, they're training the MUSE, the Marine Expeditionary mm -hmm. Units, to, That's go, correct. Uh, to go through their pre-deployment training package. Yeah. Um, so very complex, very elongated training. It's also a great place to work because because everything's got a tie-in. Yeah. So when I came home from Special Ops Command in Europe, I got orders at SOTG, Special Ops Training Group, and I meet, ta-da, yeah. Sergeant Lumby. <laughs> and so we start working together. And the funny part is, <clears throat> I, in, in that section, everybody, they, the boss, Colonel Muth, God bless him, uh, he goes, yeah, yeah, Carrie, I'm sending you down to the mountain Arctic thing. So that's swell, sir. Uh, you know my background's like all in boats. Because I know it. I don't give a shit. I need you to go out and unscrew that goddamn mountain leader stuff. Uh, okay. So I get that. And I get all these guys like him. Yeah. All hand-picked instructors who are all mountain Arctic experts. Yeah. Except for me. So they were like teaching the students and me at the same time to get me up to speed. I hate that mountain climbing shit anyway. I hate the cold. I know you hate the cold too. Yeah. So it's just it's there. I was. It's so unpleasant. What do you do, sir? I'm a mountain Arctic cold weather instructor. You hate the cold. Yeah, I know. I hate it. Shut up. Go away. We do what we're told. <laughs> we do what we're told. So that's how we met <clears throat> at SOTG. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. So how did you end up finding yourself? Because uh, I know you're. Scuba qual, your mm -hmm. jump qual, your military free fall guy. Like yeah, you were on the teams for uh, CQB recon, right? instructor. Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. I was. Uh, well, I'd like to tie it back into something. So when I was uh, in the grunts, you know, in the infantry units, uh, I took the NDOC and I passed. But the problem was, is they were not letting anybody go <clears throat> over to recon uh -huh. because if you guys recall. The, the MOS at the time, the specialty, wasn't a primary MOS. The secondary, yeah. Yes, it was a secondary. So, you know, it didn't matter what you could do. You you had to go where your monitor was going to allow you. Yeah. And so I took those orders to Bridgeport. And uh, while I was there, got to meet a lot of good recon guys, a lot of West Coast guys. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, m matter of fact, a good friend of mine, uh, he's my climbing partner. He, he's uh, He was KIA a few years later during uh, Fallujah. Mm -hmm. But uh, Ed Smith... Horsehead Ed Smith, first art. Yeah, he was a good dude. Uh, kept me kept me focused as a young corporal. <laughs> kept me focused. But I, I was always enamored with the community, the recon community. Uh, it was just what I wanted to be a part of. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I just wanted to see if I could could make it within the organization. So as I kept finding things to do within the Marine Corps, uh, looking for that next challenge, one of the things I wanted to do was uh, I wanted to get over there and 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 see what I could make of myself and 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 just. To, and honestly, just be associated with a lot of guys who I could then, you know, try to emulate and just make myself better. Yeah. And so that's why I ended up getting the opportunity to do uh, when Keith was my OIC, my officer in charge. I hope um, you didn't try to emulate him. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he set me up for success. Me, me and a couple other guys, he set us up for success, you know, unbeknownst to us. And, uh, and that had just really allowed us to go forth and do the things that we really wanted to do and yeah. allowed us to, uh, to flourish when we did get there. Um, so I, I, get, I got orders to, uh, matter of fact, uh, you were talking about Norway. Mm -hmm. We were, were in Norway uh, under the guise of teaching them. I forget who we were teaching at the time, but Keith calls me over and he goes, hey, your orders came in. You're checking in next week. I was like, no, we're in Norway. He goes, no, you're checking in next week. <laughs> and, and so that's how I went down. Yeah. I got orders to second force. Uh, James Hypes got orders to, uh, yeah. to second recon attack, and we were gone. Yeah, we were gone, and, uh, and and Scott Chambers and I were being Machiavellian in the background, going, "We're getting these two over to recon." And Colonel Muth, everybody was, everybody was in on it, but you two. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way the Marine Corps works that way sometimes. Yeah, but I mean, we knew that these guys would <clears throat> just knock it out of the park if they yeah. could get them there, yeah. and they did. I mean, your resume looks like a, a poster for what everybody in recon wants to do. Yeah. It's just, I mean, you've been every school there is. Yeah, Great. and it's, it's, I mean, the Marine Corps is, I think, I, and I could be wrong, but my experience over my 32 years is it's, like, it's a meritocracy, man. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. If you're yeah. humble and you're a hard worker and you put the work in and you, you know, listen to people who are telling you what, you know, yeah. that are in charge of you, that are telling you what to do and do the, and do the things and make the good choices that they, they tell you to do, yeah. you're going to be successful in this organization. Yeah. Regardless of, of anything. Is, none of this shit is rocket science. 
It's no. And I laugh all the time. We made light of the, the diversity thing in the beginning, but the Marine Corps is an extremely diverse organization. The bottom line is this. You carry your own fucking rucksack, That's right. you're good. You or sleeping it. Or sleeping it. <laughs> <laughs> you can't carry your rucksack, you suck. And nobody cares what color you are. Nobody yeah, cares. No one cares. If you sleep with goats, I don't care. I kind of care about that. Actually. Well, you have a thing for goats. <laughs> You know, I like goats too, I, but not like that. <laughs> with a little hot sauce. You know. Oh, goats with hot sauce are good. Yeah, I'm trans I mean, species. Don't make fun of me. <laughs> with no vegans. It's one thing we're recording now. We probably got vegans. I don't know. <clears throat> which is going to make your MRE go, selection. Go, so see, go see Doc about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Scram. Shit. Yeah. So, over to force. So... I understand that you also you were a scuba guy, right? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> what what course did you go through, and how how tough was that getting? Um, into? well, I'll I'll be honest. You know, w the water, as Keith alluded to earlier, is a great equalizer. You know, yeah. there's a couple of things we which we've all experienced that are great equalizers. I think water, being in the water, is the number one equalizer. And you know, as a kid growing up, I would go to a river or a pond, and I could swim that way. Yeah. But the, but Marine Corps swimming, tactical <laughs> swimming, is an entirely different animal. There's no, very little resemblance. Yeah. Matter of fact, the only resemblance is the water. Yeah. Everything else, everything else is an entirely different animal. Yeah. Um, and so I struggled. I, it took what, me. A, you mean like carrying weapons and wearing a pack and having yeah. things tied to you that you Com hold? Combat the water boots, throwing shit at you. <laughs> yes. Pool. Yes. I trained long and hard. My wife and my kids go with me to the pool many hours. Uh, you know, and it, just struggling to, one, just to maintain my ability to stay in the organization yeah. it, where I'm expected to be comfortable in the water, and then two, just to go to dive school and be, you know, get qualified on that system. And so it took me a while. I, and you know, I'm proud to say, I I, I struggled, but I never quit, which mm -hmm. is you know one John of those. John Daly said the same thing. Yeah. I can swim. Yeah. And we all do this. You know, you grow up. I can swim. You know, pool. Oh, I'm going in a surf zone with yeah. full kit. Oh, Ten yeah. foot plunging waves at about yeah. an eight second interval. Yeah, why don't you just call the ambulance now? Because yeah, yeah somebody's going in it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you know, it's just just for people at home who have never done any of this stuff. All you got to do is try to just imagine swimming in your full set of clothing. Yeah. Yes. Your yeah. shoes and socks, your pants, your shirt, maybe a jacket. And your winter, your winter clothing, not summer clothing. Yeah, yeah, this is this yeah, is winter true. clothing because I wear cargo shorts in the summer. Yeah. Mm. So, I mean, just right there, that's hard, right? And then yeah. you start adding pieces of equipment to it. And, it just, and you're performing it's, tasks absolutely. and swimming retarded distances. Yeah. yeah. So you had to go to something called pre-scuba, right? <clears throat> I went to a pre-scuba. Uh, I think they call it pre-dive now. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, so... How would that work out? <laughs> uh, it was traumatic, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> and anyone who's ever gone through pre-dive or pre-scuba and says it wasn't traumatic, well, they just didn't have the right... I, I think they're downplaying just exactly how mentally challenged because it's a mental game. It is a mental uh, you know, you know you, techniques counts for a lot, <clears throat> but the mental toughness that comes from enduring it and you know and getting through completing your tasks, mm -hmm. uh, you know that's that's a much bigger hurdle to get through. Yeah. And uh, and and it took me a while. I I went through uh, two pre schools where I struggled, and a pre scuba is two weeks of okay. just constant. Uh, you're constantly in the water, in and out of the water. A lot more in the water than you are comfortable with till you get comfortable yeah. with the uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And it's, well, so I, I didn't do a pre-scuba. I just, actually, I just went to scuba school. But one of the things that prep you for is like crossovers, for example. Oh, yes. So crossovers is designed, people don't realize this when they're making them do it, but it's designed to expand your, your O2 capacity. That's so correct. So you learn to hold your breath longer and longer doing crossovers. Yeah. Well, what crossovers is, is... One half of the group will get on one side of the pool, one half of the group will get on the other side of the pool. That's the way we did it anyway. One side has to go down and touch the bottom and come back up, and the other side has to stay higher and go underneath the water. Yes. And when you come up on the other side, as soon as the last guy gets up, the instructor blows the whistle again. So if you're the last guy every time, you get just enough time to go, <laughs> and I'm good. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, yeah. so pays to be a winner. Yeah. Pays to it be does a because you get a couple of breaths. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, get your heart rate down yeah, again. Get your heart rate down <laughs> and a little bit. You learn tricks like <clears throat> swallowing underwater. You click the yes. mouth out. Yes, Bob, exactly. Bob Newman taught me that trick in Coronado. He's trying to get the same thing. It's lung capacity. So he's like, here's what I want you to do. You're underwater, swallow. I'm like, swallow what? I'll drown. He goes, no, jackass, keep your mouth closed. <laughs> <laughs> he's <just> swallow saliva <clears throat> and it tricks your brain into thinking you took a breath. Now he's telling me this. 
he's a gunny, uh, he's a wise ass from hell, and I think he's making a joke. I'm like, fuck you. He goes, no, I'm serious, Keith, you got to do this. All right. So I tried it, and it worked. Absolutely works. Yeah. Only for so long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but eventually you still need air. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. Yes, there is that. But it's, it, it is all that learning. There are tricks to every trade. Yeah. Absolutely. But, you know, and there are guys who will teach you these things. And that's the beauty of the Marine Corps in a lot of ways. So, like, in school, <clears throat> school um, one of the components of the course was uh, you swim around inside the pool, and the instructors are on a snorkel, mm-hmm. right? So they yes. Can, they can only, like, as long as they can hold their breath, they're allowed to pose problems on the students. So you're <laughs> swimming around in buddy teams at the bottom of the pool, and the instructors will swim down, and they'll start posing problems on you, like yes. smashing you on your head yes. and turning your air off and ripping all your stuff out of your face, yep. spinning you around, <laughs> beating, you, <laughs> beating you up a little bit. Uh, Where's yes. my fins? Yeah. S- simulating violent surf. Sure, absolutely. <laughs> and so, you know, what they teach you is you're just supposed to grab onto yep. one of your um, one of your straps and just wait till it's over. Yep. And once it's over and you settle out and then you start solving yep. your problem, which is yep. pull your you know, equipment back around, get the regulator back in your mouth. But one of the things that I discovered, like it's a flaw in the system, right, is, is you know this is going to happen to you, but you don't yes. know when. So you start breathing incorrectly, right? So you take a deep breath, and you let about half out. And then you take another deep breath. So you always have like a full set of lungs. Yeah, yeah. which is dangerous. Because you're, wait- <laughs> so you're, you're waiting for the instructors to come and hit you. Now, it, once they hit you, if you have a problem, you got to surface. Yeah. Now you get all that extra air in your lungs. It's worth it. It's called of, bends. Right? <laughs> so anyway, I just noticed that as a flaw when I was there because I was like, I really did not want to run out of air. <laughs> that was paramount while I was at school. Yes, ah. yes. At me, you know, in my typical fashion, I was just going to grunt it out. I was just going to be like, you know, stick, beat. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm just going to grunt it out. Just cave, caveman approach. Yeah, I don't grunt. Yes, and, and therefore I just, I really worked on my lung capacity, I'll tell you that. But I noticed, too, there were little tricks, you know, like you were talking about, like, not a full exhale. Mm-hmm. You know, it's yes, it's dangerous, but let's let's get through this problem. <laughs> well, because the instructors will wait until you let your air out, and then they'll turn. They'll, they'll be above you, turning your air off until they get to the last turn. Then they'll devious, wait. They'll devious. wait for you to let all your air out, and then they'll do the last turn, and you're like, yep. <laughs> oh shit, it's coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but uh, back to the pre dive. So I went through four times. The first two times it was a total learning experience. The second or the third time was me competing for a school seat, which I, you know, you got to get good scores through the course. Uh, and uh, there was only like I want to say there were two quotas you know, okay. you know, for years and years and years. There were tough. no quotas. It was tough to get to get into the schools. Yeah. yeah, and then the fourth fourth time I went through uh, was just a formality, and you know I, I went to school and passed mm-hmm. on my first go. But uh, yeah, my first introduction to pre dive pre scuba as we called it back then. Uh, was the fact that, uh, you know, Second Force Recon, we were in French Creek at the time, and uh, pre-dive was conducted uh, all along through French Creek area, and we would do the open water swims in French Creek proper. Uh-huh. Uh, we started at the mouth of uh, French Creek where it comes into the New River, and we would swim up the creek a and, and 1,000 meters, and then we would come back. And, uh, it, you know, and it... You know, the standard is uh, 15 minutes per 500 meters. Okay. Yep. And so, you know, and that's, you know, that's where we were be- getting beat into our yeah. brain housing group. And so that's what we're doing. Mm-hmm. So we're going up there and we're, you we're doing good. Slick? Were you swimming slick? Or you uh, no, we, we were not slick. You know, we were in full combat gear, which consisted of uh, uniform top and bottom. Uh, the uh, We had boots on. Uh, we had, you know, dive fins, obviously. Uh, we had a, uh, a rucksack. Uh, that was uh, waterproofed, so it didn't sink, uh, and, you know, it would stay on the surface of the mm-hmm. water, and we use that to plane out mm-hmm. as we drive to our objective and then turn around and hit the finish line. Not um, easy, not easy. No. No, it's not. It, it's, it's very much a, a cardio workout uh, like... Uh, like like no other. You mean worse than Pilates? Oh, it's... Uh, <laughs> I, I gotta say, some of the most extreme workouts I ever done were in the water. Yeah. You, you know, like so, yeah. like just pushing your endurance, you know, just like and trying to cut through it. It was, it's in the water. It's the, it's the great equalizer for a very good reason. Yeah. But uh, so we we get halfway up, and and it, it's a summer. It's a nice warm summer uh, day. I want to say it was July or August. I just remember it being really really warm, mm. 
as we were lugging the boats on our shoulder down there because, you know. Because that's what you do. Because that's what we had to do. And uh, It's not hazing if it has a training purpose. That's, <laughs> yes, that's what we were told. Boats got to get there somehow. Yeah, so and then that's right. the exact, that's the other thing. So, well, you know, there's no boat trailer, so you guys are it. <laughs> so we, 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 we humped it down there, uh, the five or six guys who were in the class. And uh, we get to French Creek. We get, we get everything set up for the instructors. They show up. They get on the boats. We get out to the start line, and we start swimming up, finning up French Creek proper. And we get to a turnaround point, and, you know, they're, they're yelling out our times. So, you know, they're trying to make sure that we're not sandbagging or anything. It was a <clears throat> pretty standard approach to training. All of a sudden, and I'm, you know, I'm keeping with the pack, and I'm just going along, minding my business. You know, I'm just looking long range down to the finish line. And I see one of the instructors set up in a boat. And he takes the boat paddle and he just starts slapping the water as hard as he can. And it's like, I mean, and he's hitting it pretty good. It sounds like a rifle crack. <laughs> it's like, what's he doing? And, you know, and, we're, and, and all of a sudden now everyone's attention is being, you know, everyone's looking over the boat. And, and the guy who's the coxswain, he's like, you guys just keep going. Just keep going. It's okay. Like, all right. You know, and we keep going. Meanwhile, the rifle cracks are still going with a boat paddle. And we get to the end, everybody gets in the boat. He goes, I'm glad you guys didn't slow down. He goes, that alligator's been trailing y'all for at least 800 meters. <laughs> oh, yeah. Probably pretty big boy, too. Huh? We got some big ones out there. There are some big ones on French Creek, because I duck hunt up in there yeah. on occasion, and they're, they're still there. They, yeah. they haven't gone anywhere, and they live a long time. <laughs> they live a long time. But the, yeah, that's hysterical. That's, yeah, that's, uh, that's a true story, and that was, that was an average story, too, yeah. by the way. Yeah, yeah. But, so yeah, that was a good time. That stupid alligator out of Marsock, where the students go up on that knoll to sketch the building. They take oh, the yeah. sketching. Yeah. Well, that water behind is now here. So somebody's always got really? an alligator oh, watch. Yeah. 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 I've seen him out there sun himself. So I, a lot of couple times. Usually when I'm going home from work, mm -hmm. they'll be up on that knoll sun himself. So when they go up there to do sketching, the very rudiments. So they use the schoolhouse as the first sketching of the Yeah, yeah. You, know, so you, see, you see them all laying out there and they're, they're sketching. Always well, somebody's got to be on alligator watch because that son of a bitch comes up out of that water behind him. Now, what are we doing? Sketching, guys? Yeah, I want to sketch too. Yeah. <laughs> well, we could, we could sketch something else. No, no, no. Don't worry about it. Alligator's fine. The Marine Corps is a baffling organization. Yeah. So we, have our, we have our moments. So what? which scuba school did you end up going to? I went to uh, Marine Combat and Diver okay. uh, oh. in, in Panama City. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was a good course. I learned a lot. I was able to bring it back. Tough course. It yeah. is it's a tough course. Uh, there, there's some really tough portions where uh, you really got to put out, grunt your way through it. Mm -hmm. uh, it, was, it's, it was every bit as... Uh, it was a great time. I learned a lot. Very physically challenging. Yeah. Uh, but it's mentally uh, challenging. Uh, it yeah. is mentally challenging. I mean, you you learn to work through dive physics, yeah. dive medicine. Oh yeah, like dive physics, dive medicine. No it was, uh, yeah. Anyone who comes out of there and uh, and they maintain that level of proficiency, they're they're doing very well. It's, mm -hmm. There's a lot to retain. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I got through that, <laughs> got through the course, um, got back to uh, second force, did a couple of more deployments, um, and. Yeah, they, after that, things just kind of became a blur. You, know, you did a bunch of stuff after that. I mean, uh, yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, jump Master School. I went to Stadline yeah. Jump Jumpmaster School. But yeah. I had the privilege and the honor <laughs> of going to the 82nd Airborne's jump master, in house Jump Master School. Okay. So while. Uh, I'm trying to save on TAD money. Yeah, so trying to save on TAD money. So <laughs> while uh, the illustrious James Hypes got to go to the Special Forces Gentleman's Course, here, here I was down the sh two streets over. Mm -hmm. On, on Bragg, and I am grunting it out with every Joe in the 82nd Airborne trying to, you know, not leave early. Get yeah. a shortened course. Yes. Yeah. That was a, that was a, that was a challenging course, just a, just because of the way he ran it, but it was a, yeah, another it, good course. It's like too. a rite of passage for the Army going through static line, John Master. It just is. It's just the way you play that game. Yeah. Yeah, but, uh, so I, I, I get through that, and, uh, like, a week later, I'm at Freefall JM. Well, that's a quick turnaround. Yeah. yeah, and I gotta say, I honestly, I honestly believe that's that's exactly how the organizations should be conducting that that pipeline. Well, training. it's still fresh in your head. You just because the muscle going. memories, yeah, you just yeah. instead of starting here, you know, you start here, or you know, something along those lines. But it, the muscle memory's already there. Mm -hmm. I mean, now it's just a matter of learning the system. Yeah. And it was, I mean, it and it stays. 
I mean, I, even now, I can still do a JMPI. Yeah. It's crazy. A JMPI is? A Jump Master Primary Inspection, and that is uh, the Jump Master's responsibility to ins to inspect the safety aspects of the uh, parachute harness before a jumper goes uh, up in the aircraft. So I can still do a JMPI. And everybody gets one before, actually two, before you get on the plane. Yeah, That's and then correct. you do a self-check also. And do a self-check and, and, and a buddy check. <clears throat> just to make sure. And anything still going. <laughs> yeah, sometimes still. How about that? Did, did you ever run into any situations where something didn't work for you? Uh, Yeah, so uh, my wife's going to laugh at this. Or not laugh, but she's going to recall this. Uh, the uh, there's There's been several instances where uh, it involved airborne. Uh, one was a mishap. One was a mishap uh, when I was in second force. A good buddy of mine, still good friends with him. I keep in touch with him. Uh, Doc Kalal, Eric Kalal, he hit a power line mm. on LZ Lark where uh, on Capital June, and uh, he he got seriously injured on that. And uh, we were doing a platoon jump that night, and uh, and yeah, he was uh, he was unfortunately injured very badly and uh, medically retired after that. Uh, good friend of mine, he still you know he. His ability to carry forward after that was, has been nothing short of impressive. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so there was there was that incident. Um, what so was the, the mechanics of his injury? Like, did did the power lines interrupt his flight? And so on the final, the... also on the final approach, uh, because of the winds that night, and it was a pitch black night. You know, it, I, I I can't say that it was totally. Uh, uh, jumper error, although, you know, in those investigations, they always say, well, the jumper was, you know, didn't have enough training or something. Uh, but what what ended up happening was on our final approach, the last 500 meters as we're coming, you know, we're under 500 uh, feet, excuse me, coming down. Uh, and we are coming across, you know, the, the drop zone was on the edge of the base. So on our final approach, we are over private, you know, we're off base mm -hmm. coming back onto the base. And that's just the way the winds were, uh, uh, taking us that night and so what ended up happening was there was a power line across that you know that a power line and a, a an asphalt road mm -hmm. you know just outside the base and we were coming across that and he was losing altitude just a little too fast and uh, he ended up hit, hitting those power lines and he, uh, he ended up getting ground out, ground out and I can't recall if we were doing combat yeah, equipment okay. on that one or not I, I think we were because uh, I remember we had rifles we had to turn rifles back in the armory yeah. But uh, yeah, it was a, uh, it was a, mm. it was a, it was a long night. <clears throat> yeah, I bet. Mm. So there was that. Uh, there was another incident when I was in the basic course at free fall, um, where an instructor and a student were killed in my class. Really? Yeah, they had a mid-air collision. It was pretty bad. So I've learned to respect, uh, a healthy respect for all the dangerous systems and training that we go through in the Marine Corps. Uh, you know, because it any the training itself is inherently dangerous. You know, you try to mitigate it as best you can, um, but you know, at the end of the day, sometimes you are rolling the dice with things that can just go sideways and you cannot anticipate it. Um, and, and so, that being said, I always try to have a very healthy respect for the things that we're doing and, and not get complacent. Yeah, and you have to. Don't get complacent. On the other hand, this is why dark humor is involved in everything. Yeah, you do. the gallows humor is definitely. Oh, uh, my gallows yeah. humor is thick. <laughs> I have very thick gallows humor. And that's humor. the reality of it. I mean, and, yeah, I, I get a well, lot. Otherwise, of you, you lose your mind worrying about right. shit. So you make a joke at everything. Yeah. yeah, and I don't see how you can be in this organization on any level and not have that level of gallows humor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's true about a lot of different businesses. I put firefighters and EMTs. Yeah. And, well, you're an EMT too, aren't you? Oh yeah, yes, I was. Uh, when I was uh, an instructor at Bridgeport. Um, we, we didn't have a lot of corpsmen who were qualified to go up on a mountain and, uh, you know, who could respond in a timely manner. Because we were doing, uh, in the summertime, we are doing rock climbing. Mm -hmm. You know, guys fall off a cliff face. They get injured, you know. If they, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, That's an understatement. Yeah, yeah. Yes, it is an understatement. You're doing 100-foot rappels because I've done it. And I'm thinking, this goes bad. Or, or lead climbing. You know, you're yeah, lead climbing nice. and you're putting your own protection into the rock wall and it yeah. pops out as you get just get past it and then you... Fall down and you it pulls right out, or you know, you're going for a little longer ride than you thought. Yeah. You know, attached to a rope. You know, so what ended up happening at the time was uh, they decided to make all the instructor staff uh, go, get EMT qualified. Yeah. We were EMT uh, basics, yeah. which is yeah. pretty cool, actually. I mean, yeah, it, it's cool. a lot of people don't get that level of training. You know, no, not about that. Not in the Marine Corps. It's very hard to you know get EMT qualified. It's expensive as shit for one thing. Yeah, yeah. and uh, so. 
So that gives you like a unique skill set because you also did uh, uh, swift water rescue, mountain rescue, right? Oh, uh, yes. EMT all kind of combined together. That's a, like, that's a very niche capability. Yeah. Like, yeah. Not a lot of people in the Marine Corps have that. <clears throat> no, a lot of the, you know, if you're, if you're going to spend any amount of time on the instructor staff at Bridgeport uh, uh, Mountain Warfare Training Center, uh, yeah, you'll you'll eventually end up with most of those qualifications. But you're right; it's very niche. Um, you know, like backcountry avalanche. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, we learned how to identify avalanches and, and blow those. And that was a lot of fun. Yeah, uh, you, got a, fun. you got a little toy sled. You know, kid sled behind you. You got probably about six pounds of C4, and you're just <laughs> and, and blasting caps in your in your rucksack, and you're just all right. We're gonna go up there, and up there is. Not it, it's not a quick path. Yes, <laughs> yeah, it's it's some serious manly terrain, but uh, again, it was great training. You learned a lot, uh, but it was a uh, it was a a real effort to get there <laughs> and yeah. get something out of it. But it was yeah, it was it was a great time. My my time at Bridgeport was it was phenomenal. And up to you know up till nine eleven, I had, I had intentions of trying to go back and be an instructor again because it was just. It was a phenomenal time. Yeah. yeah, it just never worked out because of nine. Every one of you screwballs when we were at SOTGs, I'm, I'm going to go back to Bridgeport, and like, no, you're not. Yeah, I, I am. I'm going to watch, watch closely. <laughs> you're, not you're not going, going back. back. Yeah, it was a great time. Though. I mean, because you had a lot of autonomy, you know. As 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 a young as well, for me, when I got to Bridgeport, I was a corporal and then a sergeant. Mm -hmm. You know, and there was a lot. Of, you know, I had a lot of latitude. You know, a lot, there was a lot of times. Well, that was responsibility. Too. Yeah, a lot of times I had my own rifle company hanging on my every word, and we're in the back country for a week. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, you know, it was a great. I mean, it was a great building experience. It gave you a lot of, uh, just a lot of opportunities to interact with you know company level officers. Yeah. Uh, you know, and just learn to you know articulate exactly what they need to do, and you know, and give them well, a fair evaluation. Think about that too, because, a, anytime you have to teach something, you have to be an expert at it. Mm -hmm. And B, you have a lot of responsibility. You have, let's call it 200 kids. Yes. You've got guys way senior to you that are hanging on your every word. And I think that also makes the Marine Corps a unique organization because, you know, recon's a perfect example. You know, nobody cares what rank you are. If you're the guy who knows how to do skill X, that's correct. You're you're the man. Correct. I don't give a shit what rank you are. You you know, and that latitude to be able to put the rank aside. And, and drive on, and because the instructors, we've been there. I mean, the red helmets, those cats know everything. And if they tell you that's not a good way to go, you go, uh, okay, which way should we go? You're not going to argue about this shit. Right. Yeah. And I think that's fascinating as, as a young corporal and a young sergeant, you got the ability to do that. Yeah, it was a very unique opportunity. Uh, yeah. and, and, and that's just, it's just value added for when you're a small organization, the ability to set that aside and just, all right, you're the subject matter expert, we're going to listen to you. And just you know, drive on and get to your mission because it's yeah. all about mission accomplishment. Yeah. 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 It's just good leadership. Mm -hmm. So tell me this, Lumi. Do you have any uh, any role in the tribe as, in, with regard to leadership? Uh, no, no. I, I have no aspirations of tribal uh, leadership or. Uh, Do you want to tell us a bit about how the tribe works, or? Uh, so the tribe, uh, we are state recognized currently, um, and that's recent too, isn't it? Uh, no, no, it's not that recent, uh, and I'd be lying if I said I knew off the top of my head exactly when the state recognition came, <coughs> um, so I apologize to my me tribal members for not knowing that off the top of my head. Uh, there's only so much room in here. <laughs> uh, I'm taking a lot of hard hits. Uh, but that being said, uh, we, we have uh, state recognition, federal recognition was denied, you know, along the way because of politics. We know we know how politics works in America mm -hmm. and especially how it's gotten in the last few years. And uh, tribes, our, you know, our current tribal uh, government's been making great strides in, you know, in pushing forward and learning how the system works. And you know how the system works, you and how to work the system, mm -hmm. and uh, they're doing great. And uh, currently, I, 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 you know, I'm, I'm really hopeful that the, uh, the recognition goes through, just because it gives us access to federal monies, pots of money, yeah. uh, that you know we can really use to improve the overall uh, tribe. So I'm, I'm hopeful, but I have no aspirations. I'm, I'm just happy to be a proud member yeah. of it, and 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 represent them in what I'm doing in life. So any, uh, so we'll put some resources up for if people want to learn about the tribe and the history of it and stuff like that. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. I'll, put, I'll put a link in, in the description for folks to go take a look and see what's, you know, what it's all about. Cool. That's a good idea. But uh, 
talking about tribal members, there are, you know, there are currently several members of the organization that we all worked at uh, who are members of the tribe. But uh, it's, a, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, it's almost like blood in, blood out, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't, you know, we recognize each other, but not a lot of folks know who we are. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Later. Yeah, there are several. <laughs> they are, uh, they are, yeah, like, so like I said, one's actually even a, 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 a raider. So that that's good to go. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm really proud of the fact that we have uh, people in the organization. Some some are civilians too. Yeah. As a matter of fact, yeah. uh, well, and I think maybe of, we didn't articulate that well because the three of us work together at Marsa. Yeah, and so yes, I, I'm sure the Marine Corps now probably because it's a little bigger than it was. Is but we've maybe 295 people. Total, yeah, in the entire Marine Corps. Because I swear to God, you usually they, say twelve. So yeah. I don't know. I, I, oh, <laughs> I told you, but it's true. When you think about that, it's so incestuous. It's yeah. bizarre. You know, the first day I got to to Marsoc, I'm walking down the hall. I hear, "Hey, Keith!" And I turn around. It's him. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> yes, yes. It it's uh, my, and you know, what's funny is again, my wife's gonna laugh, but everywhere I go, I keep running into guys that I know. Mm -hmm. And she's like, let me guess, you deployed with them somewhere. <laughs> yeah, like, well, as a matter of yeah. fact, yes. <laughs> matter yeah. Fact. Like walking through Walmart or something. Yeah. Oh, it's the worst. It's the worst. <laughs> I, I, yeah. It's to the point now she'll just send me, you yeah, know, who'd you meet? <laughs> <laughs> well, Lumby, we appreciate you coming out today, buddy. Um, appreciate everything that you've done for the organization. You know, it's, uh, it takes a special yeah. kind of person to, to be able to, to rise through and do all the things that you've done, and we, uh, we respect that. Well, thank you. Thanks, brother. It's good seeing you as always. Always. Yeah. Always.